using Luminar Neo as a plugin is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Well, hello everyone, welcome. Now, um, our topic today is how to use Luminar or Photoshop, or I'm sorry, Lightroom or Photoshop as a plugin. <laughs> it's how to use Luminar as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. It'd be great if it worked the other way around also. But, but what I'm gonna do is show you two ways to get the images out of Lightroom and over into um, Luminar. Now, the question is, when would you do that? Well, Lightroom is a very powerful tool, but there are some parts of Lightroom that Luminar is going to complement and help out. And, you know, sky replacement, portrait retouching, and a lot of the extra tools that we have are just a few examples. So let me dive right in. All right, so we'll start with this example here first. Now, <clears throat> I could go through and use um, Lightroom to do skin retouching, enhance the eyes, the lips, you know, and just do an overall portrait retouching with this. The problem is I have to do all that manually and it takes time and then I can't batch process it. So I'm gonna right click. Now to, to get into Luminar Neo, I can could, I could select edit in. Here's Luminar Neo. Now, if I don't see that as an option, then from the edit panel, I'll come down to preferences and under preferences, here is where I would select the external editing. So Photoshop is already selected up on top. I like to bring it in as a PSD, but down here is where we can select what we want. So notice Luminar Neo is already selected here. Now it's bringing in as a TIFF. I'm gonna change that to a JPEG. And the rest of my settings, I don't mind. So I'll click OK. So now I can go into Luminar from there or right click, add it in. And now look, Luminar Neo will be one of my main choices. So let's click on that. Now I have an option. I can edit with whatever um, adjustments I made in Lightroom or I can edit a copy. So I'm just click on edit and I'll keep the changes or whatever changes we used inside uh, Lightroom. Now it's preparing a file. Now what it just did, if you notice in the bottom here, it actually copied it first. Now it's opening up Luminar Neo. And at that point, I'm working with a JPEG. So I went from a raw file now into a JPEG file. So let it open up and here we are. So this is where we'll begin our, our real quick edits. I'm gonna come down to my portrait tools and pop a little light into her face, enhance her eyes. So let's go a little bit closer. Here we go. Eye enhancer. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit closer. Now her eyes are brown. So let's see if we change. Yep, look at that. So if we change it to her natural color, and then just dial it back a little bit. There we go. So we got the eyes taken care of. Her mouth. And just give it a little pop. Her teeth look fine. And now skin retouching. I'll give it a generous amount. And the rest of the settings are fine. I don't need to adjust your body or anything along those lines. Now here is high key, which is kind of cool. Is at this point here, look what I'm doing here. I'm actually, even though this was not shot in a studio, but that high key is giving me just a little extra or a different type of look. So now that I have my portraits done, I can come over here to enhance AI and just bring out the overall image. Great, and last, let's put a little vignette. So yes, we could do the vignette inside Lightroom. So that that's again, a workflow issue. You'd have to work, you have to decide 
how you want to do it. But I just, I'm kind of prejudiced towards our um, vignette tool because I love the ability to be able to select the subject and then, um, you know, perform my edits. I'm going to bring in a little, look at that fill light. And feather it. Good. Back it off just a touch. All right, let's see if it, how it looks. Great. All right, now look how quick I was able to edit this portrait. So here's before. Here's after. Now, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to come back over here to the edits. <clears throat> now, notice because this is not a raw file, the development tool was not added. So I'm going to come over to develop. And I do want to um, just adjust the black tones a little. All right. Now, I'm happy with what I have. Let me dial it back just a little. There we go. Now that I'm happy, once I click apply, it's going to take these changes. And now it's going to apply it uh, to the image itself. And now it's going to bounce it back into uh, Lightroom. Now, in the past, if there was an issue with it lining up with the other images. Um, so notice how I have it in here. There, there it is. Now let me go to the grid view. Notice it matches right next to it. So let me right click on this. And what I want to do is show it in the in um, Lightroom in my collection. You know what? I'll just come, oh, here is it. Go to folder and library. There it is. All right. And notice it did put it right next to each other. In the past, that was an issue. So in the past, <clears throat> it wasn't going back. And typically, it was because you had it set to capture time. If you switch that to file name, then you're insured all the images will line up right next to it. Because Lightroom did add did add my pre preference to uh, a prefix to it. And by the way, let me show you where that was. So again, if we go to edit, preferences, that was one spot um, I didn't show you here. Here it is, template, custom setting. So at this point here, we can assign anything we want to the file name. We can select, and again, this is a Lightroom feature. Um, we could add the original number, copy name, and so on. I like to use, or I like to put my, whatever, whatever plugin it is, whether it's Luminar, whether it's Neo. Now here I've had AI, so I'm going to change that to Neo. Um, if I were working with Topaz or one of the other ones, I like to put that in there, so at least I know where it went and where it came back from, all right? And I'll select done and okay. So that's one way of bringing our images into um, Luminar or into Luminar, just doing the simple edit command. Now let me come back down here and we'll select this image here. Yes. Yes. I imagine that's an 8-bit JPEG of some type. Why did you change it to a JPEG and not a PSD or a TIFF? Um, personally, I, I just I like JPEGs because I know that once once I edit this, I'm done with it. Now, if there if I were going to do future edits, then you would, you would select a TIFF. But JPEGs just seem to, to work a little bit better in my workflow because at this point, now it's a JPEG. I don't need to export it from the program, I could just go to my uh, Windows folder, find it, and set it off as an email, social media, or off to the printing. But again, if you're going to plan and spend more time with it, then you're correct, then save it as a TIFF, all right? Now, to take that, to take that a step further, if you want to bring it into Luminar as a raw file, now you come down to export. So file, export, and up in here where it says export to, you'll click on that, 
and then you'll select Luminar Neo. Now, here's the part where if you want to export it and still have the raw capabilities of Luminar Neo, change the image format from TIFF to original. Now, when I export it, it's going to do its thing. Notice it didn't make a copy yet. So it's taking it as a raw file, bringing it into Luminar Neo, and then from here, I'll show you how we're going to use, I'll show you how we're going to be able to use the uh, development tool as a raw processor. So now, if I brought it in, and over here, yes, you know why? Um, let me cancel out of this. Oh, you probably worked on it before. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Look, look, look what I just realized. That was, um, I deleted the wrong file. So, let me take this one. This is an NEF file. I'm sorry because I know how much this group loves landscape photos. I was trying to get extra credit from you guys. So, let me do this. I do have a raw file right here. And I'll do the same thing. File, export, original, here we go. Now export it in. And we'll give it a second. Now when it does come in, you are gonna notice that I do have raw capability. I, I'm able to see the develop tool as a raw processor now. Here we go, there it is. So develop raw. So at that point, now I have my camera profile. So if you decide to do your process, your raw processing inside Luminar Neo, then you want to export it and bring it over. And then I'll just hit apply and it brings it back. So the question is, when would you want to use the raw processor? Well, some people, love Lightroom's DAM feature, the digital asset manager. And they love the fact that they'd organize their photos the way they want them. That's all they want it for. And then they want to export it out to let's say Luminar and have Luminar do its thing and then bring it back in. So that's one of the reasons you'd want to use a raw processor. But if you're comfortable using the raw development tool inside Lightroom, then by all means, you know, stick to that workflow. All right, so we have this set. Now, let me jump back over here. Um, for system resource sake, I'm gonna close out of Lightroom once I launch Photoshop. So here comes Photoshop. And while I'm here, let's close out of uh, Lightroom. This will free up some system resources. All right, so when would you use Photoshop with Luminar Neo? All right, well, again, what I like to do is whatever tool is gonna save me time and help me, help me to be more creative, that's the tool I'm gonna go with. Um, until we get mask AI and portrait um, background removal, yeah, I have to do it in, photo, in Lightroom, or I'm sorry, in Photoshop. Let me hide this mask for a minute. So this is what I ended up doing inside, um, inside Photoshop. I brought in a plane and of course, Erica. Now, this is what this looks like. It, it's a good job. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. And all I did was the simple click on the um, magic wand, and then select subject, did a little tweaking, and now I came up with this. So I could spend a lot of time right now creating a special look inside Photoshop, or I could just select these two, right click, and I wanna copy them to their own layer, Control J, 
Now that I have them together up here, I'll right click again. Now what I want to do is convert it to a smart object. Now by creating it as a smart object, by creating this as a smart object, now it became a smart filter. So if I come in to my filter, Skylum, Luminar Neo, it's going to allow me to go in, create my edits inside Luminar Neo, and then go back into Photoshop. But the best part about it is if I decide I wanted to go back and make additional changes, I could select that smart object or the smart filter now, go back in, make my changes, and then come back into Luminar Neo. So we'll make a real quick change. So at this point, yep, at this point, I'm hoping my system resources with Zoom and everything else running um, is sufficient. Now, another problem we could run into, because this is taking longer than usual, I did just upgrade my Luminar Neo. If you're running into issues like I am right here, what you would do is you, you would, of course, shut down Photoshop and then run, if you're a Windows user, one, run Luminar Neo as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, you'll run Luminar uh, Neo as an administrator. Then from there, um, re re add the um, the plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this right here. Let's see. So I'm going to end that task. I'm going to save this for now. So we'll just come right back to it. And no, I didn't plan this. All right, so here we are. I'm going to right click on my Luminar Neo uh, thumbnail. Again, right click on Luminar Neo and run as an administrator. This is strictly for Windows. So this is a window based um, solution to this. Mac has no problems. You may have to go into security settings and give it permission. So let's just open up. And once Neo opens, we'll, um, we'll come over here to the file menu. And then it's just a matter of installing plugins. We'll uninstall them. I could just reinstall them here, but I like to hit done and then go back into it. I know we don't have to do that. I just feel uh, a little more confident. Install, install, done. Now Luminar Neo is installed as a plugin for Photoshop. So we'll launch Photoshop again, and then we'll continue where we left off. So again, if there's an issue, if you find that your plugin is hanging like we just saw there, now I could have been impatient, uh, but if it's hanging, Go back in, reselect your plugins, um, disable them, and then re-enable them. Let me bring this up. All right, and we're back where we started. Filter, Skylum, and Neo. And here we go. So right now I'm at 82% of my system resources. So as you can tell, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Luminar, they are memory hogs. They love to squeeze every ounce of memory you have in your machine. So when you're working with them, it's best to have one or two of them open at a time. And of course, running this as a Zoom meeting, that's chewing up the majority of the uh, bandwidth. All right, while that's loading, while that's loading, um, Carl, let's open up for real quick discussions. 
Richard has had his hand up. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah, I just uh, exported a file from Lightroom Classic, a, uh, a raw file, and it came, uh, opened up another copy of Neo, because Neo was already open. Yep, yes. So it opened the plug-in version of it. Yeah, I well... Why, I don't know why it would do that. Yeah, because... Because you have a standalone, because you could use Luminar Neo as a standalone or as a plugin. So the plugin is going to act differently than the standalone version. So you'll notice, okay. Okay. yeah, so you'll notice that you don't have certain features like the crop tool is not in the plugin version for Photoshop because Photoshop wants its crop on its own. Um, but other than that, the rest of the tools will work the same. Yeah, I did notice though also that uh, when I clicked apply, it didn't send it back to Lightroom, uh, a couple copies, and also the catalog, the Neo catalog contained those two copies also. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. because, yes, because you have, you, you directed that, because you pointed your uh, Luminar catalog to that folder, anything that's, that's in that folder will also appear in your Luminar catalog. So... Okay, but this picture was not in that folder. Um, where did you get that picture? Well, if you look at your catalog, mm -hmm. and so, so if you look at your Luminar catalog, I'm sorry, if you look at that folder on your hard drive, that, that image will be in that folder. So somehow it got exported or saved back to that folder. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, you got it. So, Carl, yeah, something, again, with my, with my update, uh, I apologize. This is something I'll have to address. That's something I'll have to address um, after the show. But the, the concept <coughs> excuse me, is using it as a smart object. We can go back in, do our thing, and then come back, do some more edits, and if we realized, oh shoot, I wish I added a, a different texture. We could just rerun that plugin and it'll bring it, it'll open up with all of the, the changes I've made. I can make additional changes and then bring it back in. Can you go back to, to some of the changes you've already yes. made? Yes. Um, that's, a, they, you know what, that's a very good question. Let me end test this real they, quick. You know, um, let me think about that one. Yes. Yes. So, and so in your edits, in your edits, you'll have a list of all the edits that you've done and you'll be able to go back through and add or delete those edits. Awesome. But you can only do that if the Photoshop was a smart object. Exactly. So that, that's the key. It has to be a smart object. Okay. All right. I thought that, but I'm glad you uh, confirmed that. Got it. And let me pull this over here. All right, Carl, we'll continue with the questions. Okay. Um, Deepak? Answering questions. <laughs> that. A lot of technical stuff in the background here. Uh, somebody needs to convert two micrometers. Okay. Can I ask quickly, Benelli? Please do. Yes. I was just going to claim that I just successfully loaded Luminar Neo into Affinity Photo. Oh, nice. And it's going back and forth. This is going to change my workflow significantly now. That is amazing. So, what what did you do? What did you do to do that? Did you copy the, well, the plugin? What I, what, no. What I did on Affinity Photo. Uh, I don't think I can share this. Oh, actually, maybe not with this. Hang on one second. Can I share the screen? Um, yep, one moment. Just bear with me one second. I'm just going to get a... Uh, because I shoot... And one actually, one. you know what? I'm, I'm going to end our segment here. Okay. Um, and then we'll be... We'll, this is a perfect topic for the Ask Me Anything segment. All right? So we'll okay. catch you back at the end of the break here. All right. So, oh, yeah, sure. All right. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And I'll see you at the next coffee break. <laughs> 